May God begin with you to do something that he has not done before in your family in the name of Jesus. I say, even if your father was a pastor, <laughs> Zachariah too was a pastor. But when they say, John, they say, no. We have seen ministers rise from this family, but we have not seen the one or that by the name John. It means a new line of priesthood is being instituted. The name given to him was not a name for identification. It was a representation of an order that God has birthed from the womb of the spirit. He said, nobody, we have seen ministry, but what you are doing is breaking the yokes of many foundations. It seems as if God set you aside as a sign to us that even the prophecies he gave us when we served him, we didn't know how it's going to come to pass. But the way we look at your life, it looks as if you are a fulfillment of that prophecy. Can I pray for you? May the Lord fulfill prophecy with your life in the name of Jesus. I cannot fail my God. I must fulfill this cause. There is prophecy over me. I cannot fail my God. I cannot fail my God. I must fulfill this cause. There is prophecy over me. <laughs> I cannot fail my God. I'm a living prophecy. <laughs> I must be free. There is prophecy over you. You cannot fail Jesus. You cannot fail Jesus. You must fulfill his call. There is prophecy over us. In Imo State, we cannot fail our God. We cannot fail Jesus. We must fulfill his cause. There is prophecy over us. <laughs> we must. We come, fellow. We must not fail our We must fulfill his cause. I saw one advert recently. I've used it to preach two times already this week because the message in it is too much. You must have seen it. A brother was doing advert for a cab company. How many of you have seen that advert, recent advert? The brother was inside a Rolls Royce. You saw it, you have seen it, am I correct? Ah, that brother must be, his father must be a pastor or he must be spiritually intelligent. What he revealed there is enough for Satan to even attack himself. Because it's reality beyond explanation. He was inside Rolls Royce and one song was beating. He was doing like this. He was rejoicing. He was flexing. Somebody said he was flexing. Suddenly they opened the door. He just came out from the Rolls Royce and wanted to come out. And a vehicle did and almost cleared him out of the road. That's how he almost died. He said, hey, 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 I better go. He now closed the door. How many of you saw that thing? Uh -huh. He now closed the door. Now instantly called the uncle on the phone. And the uncle picked. And he told the uncle, Uncle Abego, Uncle Abego, na cab. Na cab, no be my car, no be my own, no be my own. The uncle now said, eh. I shock. That means both him and the uncle know what's happening. You are the only one living a life that is casual. Listen, some of you don't know, Satan has taken you more serious than you took yourself. He said, Uncle Abego, don't be my own, no, don't be my own. No. Uh -uh. He now started telling the uncle, where well, that's their advert, when it was true. The uncle said, uh -huh. he called his name and said, Be careful, oh. be careful. Oh. Say, that is the next thing I'm about to say is why I went here. You know what he told him? He said, Nothing concerned our family, concerned Rolls Royce. Somebody shout fire. <laughs> There is a way you will want to advance in life in ministry. <laughs> they will send message and say, nothing concern our family, concern this kind of advancement in life. A brother came and told me that. He said he cannot allow his money to get to 10 million in his account. Once his money gets to 10 million, 
everything we clear. So what he did is to, he had up to five to six bank accounts. The reason why he had multiple bank accounts is not because one or two cannot hold his money. But so that this one will contain seven million. Are you now seeing it? You see wisdom? Another one, eight. Another one, six. Another one, five. That's how he split his money. If one ever gets to ten, it will go down to zero. Say so nothing concern their family, not my own. Their family concern Rolls Royce. See, brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? There is something concerning you and your family and being wealthy in the name of Jesus. Yeah, even if you don't like the money, just come and give it to church or give it to your society to get better. Are you getting the point? But you might need it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that you might need money. You, I'm not saying you need it, but you may need it in life. Eh? When you become a pastor, you want to rent a hall at Oweri inside town and they tell you three million you may need it at that point you may what need it but now you don't need it don't be pressing into god you don't need it now ah uh, when you marry uh, my brother are you married uh, it shows when you marry there is something they call sma gold have you heard of it you have heard of it don't worry, you have just heard of it by the hearing of the ear. One day you will see it with the seeing of the eyes. SMA gold, when you buy it, on that day of SMA gold, you might need money. But for now, don't be pressing into God. Are you with me? You don't need money now. What did I say? Ah, you people like money, let me come. <laughs> so, that's sarcasm. You, you need, even if just even if it is to defeat the spirit of poverty in your family just have one million I transferred one million to a sister to transfer for a project that we had and she said in her life in her family that one million that is in one place has never entered into anybody's account one million in one place has never and of course when he entered they blocked her account have to go to bank and unlock it. They are saying in our family, nothing concerns us concern one million. <laughs> Somebody say fire. fire! The reason why I went here is that you will be the first. They said nobody has answered John. I was privileged to meet a father of faith one day. And he now began to ask me. He was saying he's seen what God is doing. And then he was asking me, as we go to nations, go everywhere, the mighty things. I was telling him, yes, sir. He now asked me, where are you from? And I told him, he said, ah, ah, you are from Newi. I didn't know that he knows that area well. You know the question he asked me? He said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can something this heavy be? come out of here. He now said, kneel down, let me pray for you. And kneel down, he said, from your day, this proverb will be overturned. Now I'm talking for myself. As they pray for me, can I pray for you too? From your day, every proverb that is bringing ill fortune and limitation will be changed from your day in the name of Jesus. It will be changed in the name of Jesus. It will be changed in the name of Jesus. You can be seated. And they said to her, there is, there is no one among your relatives, nobody. A brother met me recently. Sorry that I'm telling one or two stories. It's because I, I'm just trying to make, buttress my point. It's not just, just a normal teaching. A brother met me recently. He said that God called him into ministry. After I asked him some question, from experience, and I asked him, how many people have done ministry in your family? Or how many of them are doing ministry? Now he said, as of now, that he's the one that is doing a serious ministry. He said, ah, why? Is it that God didn't call you people? He said, he called them. But even his brothers... 
and uncles have called him and said, this kind of ministry you are doing in our family, they don't do this kind of ministry and survive. So after me, Lord, from my day, I will be a sign unto my family that salvation has come. It is not just a prophecy that somebody prophesied in the future. You are that walking, living manifestation of that prophecy. In the name of Jesus. My brother, that's what brought me here in a sense. When I was younger in ministry. All my prayer is everywhere I go, even from home, everywhere they are prophesying. There is a revival coming. God is going to move. So I said, ah. I went and told God, I said, I don't want to be prophesying another revival. When will it happen? Uh, right, when? And I found out that prophecy without commensurate action will keep being a prophecy until a generation appears and owns the prophecy. How do they own it? By obeying the laws that we make that prophecy to manifest. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they say, eh, there is, we prophesy. How many of you, you are from Futo here? Just raise your hand. There is a, there is a revival coming to Futo. There is a revival. Things are coming to where There is a, something is about to happen. They prophesy this, prophesy this. Who? The people of the land can make the prophet a false prophet if they refuse to obey the laws that can make that prophecy come to pass. So after me, from my time, I choose to be an obedient generation. That we do what God demands of us so that his prophecy can come to pass. I came by prayer. I live by prayer. When I leave this world, I will not say by prayer. I came by prayer. I live by prayer when I leave this world I may be in a prayer <laughs> I came by prayer I live by prayer when I leave this world I will ascend by prayer I came by prayer I live by prayer and when I leave this war I will ascend by prayer I came by prayer I leave by prayer and when I leave this war I will ascend by prayer do you came by prayer you will leave by prayer and when I leave this world, I will ascend by prayer. Listen. The reason why we fight like this is because we know that prophecy has captured our days. I'm not here by chance. I'm here by divine design. I must find myself in the books and I must war. Think that thing in the books becomes a reality. I am not blind in my pursuit. My days are already calibrated in eternity, prophesied by men that we are carried by the Holy Ghost. When my biological father was alive, he said that two to three years before he married, he saw a vision. He said in that vision, he, God showed him his first son. And he saw that he's a young man. That he has some hair. That's why I come back, Molo. <laughs> hey, Mr. Wells, I have told you that this is your barber. Hi, Jesus Christ. I come back, Molo, like this. You know why? I'm not saying if I barber, I will backslide. Before you people will say tomorrow that, ah, if you see Molo on my hair, say, ah, Apostle, don't backslide. No. I'm just trying to adjust as much as possible in the physical to what is in the spirit. It is based on that that he went and married who he married. Imagine somebody like that appearing when your mother told you that when he's pregnant with you, he's fasting every week with prayer. How did you come? In the hospital. 
<laughs> uh, I was not born in General Hospital. I was delivered. In the day of my deliverance, I was brought forth. And when they looked, it was a song. And the collocations, it was a convergence of divine prophecy. From ages captured in the womb. And when a song came out, it was a manifest. It was that day we began to have hope that the appearance of this one is a possibility that the things that God spoke can come to pass. John was not a man. He was a sign in the spirit. A sign that the things that God spoke can come to pass. John. So when John was giving birth to, they were not rejoicing that they had a child that will replace them. Because John went into the wilderness and I'm, I'm not sure he married. He went there. That means, technically John was lost. So what, who was, what was born? It was a sign that was born in the heavens. And they made signs to his father. They made signs. How he would have him called. That is how important it is to name men. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, his name is John. And they marveled all. What kind of thing is this? Next verse. And his mouth was opened immediately. Just because he was able to properly name a child, his mouth was open. <laughs> and his tongue loosed. And he spake and praised God. And fear came, up, came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noise that brought throughout all the hill country of Judea. Next verse. And all they that heard them, laid them up in their hearts saying, you see what they said? What manner of child shall this be? They have seen it. And the hand of the Lord was with him. You know the fight of Satan? To derail you from the prophecies that has gone ahead of you. But can I pray for you? May the Lord by his mercy and power bring you back into alignment in the name of Jesus. Shout amen! Shout amen! Shout amen! Whatever it takes, whether you know that that is God bringing you back or not, he's going to do it. He needs to knock you in into alignment. He needs to knock you in. He needs to knock you in. He needs to knock you in. And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. I don't understand. There is no redemption that has happened. But the birth of a child activated a prophecy. Oh my God. For me to interpret it, I want to show you something. Can you show me Isaiah chapter 8? Verse 18. The scripture said, Behold, I and the children which the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. You know, when we were younger, there is this scripture is used to preach a miracle service. How many of you remember? Now, they use it to preach, and we had results because the general thought of a God of signs and wonders is a truth that is generally captured in the scripture. But as for what this place is saying, it is not necessarily talking about a miraculous manifestation. The scripture is saying here that I, you, and your son are signs that there is a generation that is rising and on the day that they rise you will know that by their rising that a manifestation of a sign either of a prophecy or of a season that is captured in the heart of God have arrived are you getting what I'm saying when John appeared John was not born to add to the children that that man needed in fact, the response of Zachariah to the revelation of the angel Gabriel is a proof that he has resigned himself to his fate. Am I correct? 
The angel told him that he will give birth. He said, ah, me, I'm old, and my wife is already stricken in age. So as of now, I'm no more expecting anything. I've resigned my faith to whatever I see. That made the angel to be, not be pleased, and told him, oh, yeah, you will be dumb as a sign. So if you check the life and prophecy, the things surrounding the birth and life of John, there are too many signs there. For example, they told him that you will be dumb as a sign. Am I correct? Number two, in the days that he was born, they said, what is the name? He gave a sign so that he can write the name. Before you know it, they asked John, they wrote his name, and when he wrote his name, he spoke as a sign. So all the life of John is a sign. It's like the scripture is trying to say, the day that John is born, begin to watch out. John cannot live his life from beginning to end, and the salvation of this family will not come. Because woven around his destiny is the capacity to bring deliverance to his family. But what do you know now? Maybe it's only your book. My brother. Hey! Quiz school. I know it. What level now? I know it. Brother, book alone can't save your family. Can't save people. So after me, I hold my book in one hand. I hold priesthood in the other hand. It's two. One hand, book. The other one, what? Priesthood. That's how they rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. Is it not true? With one hand, they were building. With one hand, they were fighting. So that if the things that doesn't allow educated people to succeed in your family rises against you, you will use your priesthood and defeat them. There is a professor that is a drunkard in the village. You don't come and say, to... somebody became a professor. After being prof for long, he now packed and went to the village to serve the idol of his village. <laughs> so after me, I, I, with my siblings, with my family, we are signs of the great things that God wants to do in our family. Can you make it a prayer for one minute? Can you make it a prayer? You cannot allow Satan to exchange for nothing. What is tied to your destiny that is far bigger? Can I, can I tell you something? Satan cannot give you what God has not ordained for you. He doesn't have that power. He is not one of the people that created. He is not in the order of the created beings. That means he can't create. What the best he can do is to manipulate things around. But to make something that is not there to appear. Even him was created. He should start from himself. Every power that has seized the ignorance of the people to tie down the resources and the inheritance that God has kept for them in the spirit, in the physical, even financially, the commonwealth. As I speak now, let that spirit be judged in the name of Jesus. At least over your life. Do you doubt what I'm saying? <laughs> there is an angel standing beside me now so I'm not just speaking what I think it's what they put in my mouth that I'm saying lose them and let them go in the name of Jesus if I say one you shout power are you ready one <laughs> My God. Two. Three. Power, 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 power of the Holy Spirit. Something is happening here now. It is by power 
that the Lord brings out his people. Hey, help that man of God. Everywhere you are, soul power! Soul power! There are times you should stop smiling until from heaven the hand of God comes down in brutal power, restoring to you what is on you and your family. It's my power. Satan doesn't like to lose what he's holding. You have to compel him. Compel him by power, by force. Jesus, you will not keep quiet. No, no, you will not keep quiet. No, no, hear me, hear me, hear me. You will not keep quiet. That's your cry. You will not keep quiet. It's time to speak. It's time to act. Speak, act, speak, act. Help. You will not keep quiet. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. In Jesus' mighty name. 